let me show you how to stream to Twitch using Streamlabs. First thing we need to do is go to streamlabs.com and download the Streamlabs desktop option. While we wait for that to download, we're gonna click the sign up button at the top and we're gonna be creating a Streamlabs ID to use Streamlabs. So that way, in case you wanna multi-stream later down the road to YouTube, to Kick, to wherever, you'll be able to connect all of those to your Streamlabs account. You can skip through the pop-ups until you see this connect your channels to Streamlabs page. And this is where we're gonna be connecting our Twitch account. So we're gonna click on the Twitch option, click connect. Now it says that our Twitch channel is connected, though when I did it, it made me go through it one more time. So that might happen to you. But now that we have connected our Twitch account, we can finally install the software we downloaded at the beginning. We're gonna hit I agree, and then we're gonna click install to our program file. So click install. Then when it's done, we're gonna run Streamlabs desktop and click finish. Now, if you do not see this page, don't freak out. What you're gonna do if you do see this page is you're gonna go to the bottom left corner and click this little person, and then we should be brought to the connect page. From here, we're gonna click on the little Streamlabs gray bubble all the way on the left. We'll click that. Then we're gonna click login with Streamlabs. Then you should see your Streamlabs ID we made earlier. So we'll click authorize. You might get this pop-up which says you have to log in with your Twitch account. So we'll click the refresh login button. And then it should bring you to the normal default layout of Streamlabs. And if it doesn't bring you here, then that's completely fine. Just skip through all of the on-screen instructions until you get to this point. Now we can look in the bottom left corner and see this little gear icon. And then we can notice that our Twitch account is linked to our Streamlabs. So now we can click done. If you've never used a streaming software before, this is what the general layout looks like. And if it doesn't look like this, or you want to change how this layout looks, you can go to the left-hand side and click these little four squares that says layout editor. And you're able to switch between a bunch of different options. You can start with this one in the top left. This is probably what it looks like to begin with. And then you can drag and drop different things. So for this instance, I'm going to drag and drop the mini feed over in this little one here. And this is what the default one should look like. So I'll click save changes. And then this is probably similar to what you're seeing. A brief overview of what you're looking at, the top little box right here, this is where we're going to set up our stream. We'll put up our alerts, our overlays, our webcam, our gameplay. So this is what the viewers are going to be seeing. Right now they're seeing nothing because we haven't set anything up. They're also not seeing anything because we haven't hit go live at the bottom right, which means we're offline. So don't worry. Below that is our mini feed, which is just going to be our activity feed, which is going to show recent followers, subscribers, and that sort of thing. Then in the bottom left, you can see the scenes tab and scenes are going to be different collections of sources. Examples of different scenes are be right back scenes, starting soon scenes, or gameplay scenes. That way you can easily click and switch between them. Sources are the things that go inside scenes. So sources are going to be webcams, gameplays, going to be overlays, going to be all the fun little puzzle pieces to put into the puzzle. The mixer is going to be where all of our audio takes place. So if you want to add your game volume, if you want to add your microphones, this is where you're going to see all of the different levels and adjust the volume with these little sliders. So let's start setting up a basic scene. We'll go on the left hand side and right click this and I'm going to rename this and we're just going to call this just chatting and we're going to hit done. And now we're going to add some sources. So we're going to click this little plus source button right here and you'll see all of the different options that we can choose from. So for example, we'll start with the webcam. So I'm going to click video capture device up here and then we're going to click add source. Now we're going to call this webcam and then we're going to click add source. From here, we're going to be able to choose from all of our webcams that we have plugged into the computer. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to pick this webcam right here for this video. If you scroll down, this is also where you're able to change the resolution in case some of the resolution got messed up. So you can click device default and go to custom. So if you wanted to change it to, let's say 1080p, you can click 1080p, change the frames per second. So I can change it to 60 if I'd like. But you really have to know the capabilities of the webcam that you're using. Otherwise, it's not really gonna work out. So personally for me in this video, I'm gonna go back to the device default because I already have webcam settings outside of the streaming software. So once you have everything set up the way that you would like, you can click the close button at the bottom. And now we officially have our webcam on the screen. Typically for a just chatting scene, you'll have the webcam as the main sort of feature and then maybe have some Twitch chat on the side. So if we want to add Twitch chat, we can click the little source button here, click plus, then we can scroll down until we see widgets and then chat box. So we can click on chat box and then click on add source. Then we can leave it as chat box and click add source. Now you can adjust the theme. So if you want to make it look like something else, like you can change it to boxed and it'll show you a preview at the top of what it's going to look like. I'm going to stick with the classic Twitch. Then you can choose if you want 
want to always show the messages by enabling this and they'll always stay on the screen. Or if you want, you can disable it and change how long it takes before they disappear off your screen. I'm gonna leave it always on. And then you can also adjust multiple other things, including badges, extra emotes, which I'm going to enable, the font size and everything else you could possibly imagine. So once you get it to how you like, you can click on close. And then you can see we have our chat box right here. So let's go and test a couple messages. So we can actually go to our Twitch chat by clicking this little arrow on the side here. So click that arrow. And if you accidentally click this arrow, it's just gonna open up all of these different things, which is fine, but you can just reclose it. So now we'll see our Twitch chat right here and you can go and send a message. So I'm just gonna put testing and that's gonna make you log in. So if you go and click this little login button, put in your username and password and log in. Once you've logged in, we can start sending some test messages. So I'm just gonna send a bunch of messages and you'll be able to see them popping up on the screen. Now you'll be able to click and drag and move this wherever you'd like, but there's a few things you gotta keep an eye out for. The first thing is that the order of sources matters a lot because if you notice the chat box is over the webcam. Now if I drag it under the webcam, the chat box is hidden behind the webcam layer. So keep that in mind that these work as layers. So if you wanna have something on top of another, it has to be higher in the source list. Another thing is that you can hold down Alt on the keyboard and then pick one of these four directions up, down, left, right. And you can click and hold the Alt key and actually crop the box. So that way, if I start testing more messages, it's gonna be cut off at the top. But you can also hold Control Z and undo certain things that you've just done. But the main thing about using the crop tool that I don't like about the chat box is that if I hold Alt and crop this to the left, it's gonna cut off all the messages. But if we undo that and make it the regular way and then go into the chat box settings, all the way back down to browser and change the, the width this way. So let's say change the width to 300, then it's not going to actually crop out those messages, if that makes sense. It's just going to change the box and the text will fit inside that box instead of cropping it and getting rid of it. So that's another thing you should just keep an eye out for. Now we can set up our alert box. So now we'll go to add a, another source, click the little plus button. We can click on the alert box and then click add source. You can leave it as alert box, say add source. And this is where we're gonna be able to add and adjust and edit all of our different types of alerts. So if you're just getting started, you're only gonna really wanna focus on the followers tab because you don't have access to bits or subscriptions until you hit Twitch affiliate later down the road. So you can click on the followers tab and you'll be able to adjust all of the different customization settings here. You can click on the media tab. You can adjust whatever GIF plays, the sound, the volume, the animation, pretty much everything your little heart desires. But I'm gonna leave it on the default just to keep Keep things simple click on done and then we'll see our alert box right here i'm going to put it in the top right corner we can adjust the size by clicking on that corner box and then dragging and then we can test out our alert by clicking the test widgets button at the bottom and then click on the follow button and then you can see our follower alert this is what's going to happen whenever we get a new follower so this is a pretty basic just chatting scene setup so let's move on to the gameplay scene so we can add a new scene by hitting the plus button we'll call this one gameplay hit on done. Then we have a brand new black screen because this is a different scene. So if we wanted to go back to our just chatting scene, we click it and we're back to the other scene. So that way you can easily switch between different scenes while you're streaming. So we can click on gameplay and let's work on our gameplay scene. So let me actually boot up a game so we can capture something. All right. So now I booted up a game and in order to capture our gameplay, we're going to have to go to the sources button, click on add a new source. We're going to go to the screen capture tab. This will allow us to capture our games and bring it on our screen essentially so our viewers can see it. So we're gonna click the add source button and then we're gonna click screen capture. That's all right, we'll leave it like that and click add source. Then we have a bunch of different options. The first option is automatic and it will try to automatically find and capture whatever game you're playing, which is very nice. But if that option doesn't work for you or if you'd rather capture your entire screen, so share everything that's on your screen, you feel free to choose one of the monitors if you have more than one and it would capture your entire screen. Now, if you don't wanna to do that you can also capture this specific window so as you can see capture window hollow knight so if we do that it will capture our hollow knight gameplay now the downside to that is that if you stream a different game like not hollow knight you'll have to go back into your screen capture by hitting done and then double clicking so you re-access that source's settings and then you'll have to change the window now if you leave it on automatic and it works for you that's fantastic i'd recommend leaving it on that because it just makes it 
it 10 times easier. So once you have your game capture up, you can click on done. And now we're gonna add everything that basically we added on the just chatting scene. So we can add a new source. I'm gonna go and add our webcam. So video capture device, add source. You'll notice that we can now add an existing source. So I'm gonna just add this webcam that we already added, click add source. Then we can just bring it down by the corner and just kind of have it wherever we like. And remember that our webcam is above our screen capture. Otherwise, it's gonna be hidden behind it. So keep that in mind. So we can have our webcam, place it wherever we want. Maybe the bottom right is good for now. And we can add another source like our chat box if we'd like. So we can scroll down to where we see chat box, click on chat box and click add source. Now, if you add the existing source for your chat box, you're basically having to use the same sort of chat box size that you used for the other one. Now, let me explain. So if we add our existing chat box source, it's gonna bring the size of the other one. Well, let's say that we didn't want this size box, right? But now if we go and double click into the chat box settings, scroll all the way down, go to the browser settings, and we change that width and height. So let's say we make it 100 width like that. It's gonna change that same chat box in the just chatting scene, and we don't want that. So for this example, for chat boxes in particular, I like to not reuse them unless I'm going to basically just use the same exact size as the other one. So I'm gonna add the source, I'm gonna add another chat box source, add source, I'm gonna add a new source instead, and we'll just call this chat box for gameplay, if I can spell. <laughs> we can hit add source, and then from here, you'll be able to make all the settings that you did before, click on browser settings, and then you'll be able to adjust the height and width without it affecting the chat box height and width of the just chatting scene. Let's change it to 400, and let's maybe make it a little smaller, 300. Hit done, and then we'll just put it right about in the corner. So I'm just gonna go and test out a bunch of messages, and I like the way that that looks. I think that's cool. But don't forget, we gotta add our alert box, right? So we go and add our source, and add the alert box source, add source, and we can just reuse the same existing source for all of them. It's gonna be pretty easy to, at least for the alert box. So add source, you can just change where your alert box, if you want it to be in the corner, if you want it to be somewhere else. But I'm just gonna resize it and leave it in the corner. So this is a pretty basic just chatting scene and gameplay scene setup. Now, if you're wondering how other streamers have these really decked out stream design and overlays and everything, they probably got it from own.tv, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. And own.tv is pretty cool because they have these stream design overlay packages. So you can just pick whichever one you'd like, like the dark mode series. And if you click on the left-hand side in the middle, you'll see everything that comes in this package, like starting soon, pause, animated webcam overlays. You got banner panels for your Twitch channel, alerts, pretty much everything you could possibly ask for all in one cohesive package. And it's super easy to set up. Once you would buy the package, you go to the left-hand side, go to the settings, and then you'll go to scene collections and then import overlay file. You'll navigate to the folder that you bought you'll go to quick start and then streamlabs import and then double click on the file give it a couple seconds and then it gives you everything you could possibly want so you got your starting soon screen you got your cool transition in between you got your just chatting scene and everything's pretty much set up you just got to add in your webcam and whatever quirky things that you want to add to your scenes so if you go to the live scene then you see you got four different webcam choices so you just pick whichever one you'd like and you can delete the rest and then if you want you can click on this little scene collection here and go back to your main scene that you're working on originally so that way you can swap between different scenes for different occasions so once again i'll leave that link down below in case you want to do that instead but now that we got all of our visuals set up and we're looking cool now we got to get to the settings so let's go to the bottom left corner again and click on this little cog wheel here we'll start with the general tab the one that you really have to know is just confirm stream title and game before going live make sure that's checked everything else really doesn't matter too much for this page the next tab we want to check out is the stream tab and we're just going to make sure that this is our Streamlabs ID because that's going to connect all of our accounts in case we want to connect our YouTube account, Facebook, whatever else you wanted to. But just make sure that your Twitch account is also logged in and connected here as well because that's how it's going to allow us to stream to Twitch. Then we can go to the output tab and change your output mode from simple to advanced. This is where things can get quite confusing, so pay attention. The audio track, we just want to leave on one. The encoder will depend on whatever graphics card or computer you're using. If you have the option of NVIDIA NVEC H.264 new, I recommend using that. But it will really depend on the computer and graphics card that you have, so everyone's setup will probably be a little bit different. In the case you do not have this encoder, I recommend checking on Google and Reddit to see what encoder would be best for the graphics card that you have for your computer. And you can feel free to experiment with different encoders, like using the software X264. Just keep in mind if you use that one, that it's gonna make your computer work extra hard to be able to stream the games. So you might run into some performance issues, but Google will be your best friend. I'd recommend checking this enforced streaming setting encoder box. For the rate control, I recommend CBR, bitrate 
6,000 and everything else you can copy. Now this again, everyone is going to have their own opinion on, but I feel like this is a good starting point because if you have a really high internet speed and great computer specs, you might be able to stream at a higher bit rate. But if you have a lower internet speed or worse computer specs, you might not be able to stream at six, you might wanna lower it. But this is a great starting point for beginners. So that way you can just put in these, see if it works for you and make adjustments along the way. Now we can move to the audio tab and just make sure that all of these are 320 to give us the best audio quality. Now we'll move to the actual audio tab on the left hand side. We'll make sure that our sample rate is 44.1 and the desktop audio device, you wanna select wherever your game volume is coming from. So I have speakers playing the game volume right now and this is that source right here. So it's coming out of my Yamaha ZG01 audio output out of those speakers. And so I click that and you can see the game volume is getting picked up in our audio mixer right here. So I know that I've selected the right one. Now for the microphone, you'll choose whatever microphone you plan on using for your stream. In this case, I'm using the Rode PodMic USB. Once again, I'll leave everything linked below this video that I'm using gear wise. So we have our game volume and our microphone selected and you can tell they're the correct ones because they're both getting picked up in the mixer. Now we can go to the video tab. The base canvas resolution is whatever size the monitor that you are playing your game on is. I'm playing on a 1080p monitor, so I'm gonna choose the 1080 option. For the output scaled resolution, it's going to be whatever you want to stream at. In this instance, I wanna stream at 1080p 60 frames per second, which is a pretty good starting point for most streamers. But if your computer can't handle that, I recommend doing 720p 60 frames per second. So you would click 720 here. But I wanna stream at 1080, so I'm gonna click 1080. And then I'm gonna choose Lanscos as my downscale filter to give us the best quality. The FPS type is going to be common FPS value that stands for frames per second. And we're gonna change that to 60 because we wanna stream at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Now we can move on to the hotkeys tab. And this is where you're gonna be able to press a key on your keyboard and do that action. So a very common hotkey is if we go to one of our scenes, like just chatting scene, go all the way to the bottom, you'll see a switch to scene button. So if I click the seven key on my keyboard, anytime I press the seven key on my keyboard, it will switch to our just chatting scene. And so if I do the same thing for gameplay, scroll all the way down to switch to scene and hit the number nine. Anytime I press nine, it's gonna switch to my gameplay scene. So that way you don't have to go back into your Streamlabs, click on the just chatting scene to switch it. You can just simply use the keys on your keyboard to switch between them seamlessly. And if you wanna reset it or you don't wanna use it anymore, simply hit this little minus button and it'll get rid of it like you never had a hotkey to begin with. Now we can move to the advanced tab. And really the only thing that I'd recommend messing with here is if you scroll down, you can enable dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming. Now what the heck does that mean? Basically, if your girlfriend is streaming Netflix in 4K next to you while you're streaming your game and you don't have enough internet to be able to handle your stream, then instead of stuttering and lagging and making it buffering and pausing and stuff, it'll just lower the quality of your stream to keep it nice and smooth so your viewers don't get that little kind of buffer freak out. So that's why I'd recommend enabling that. The next tab is the scene collections tab and that's where you're gonna import the overlay files if you decided to buy a package from own.tv. As for the rest of the tabs on the side, a lot of it is just quality of life stuff so you can feel free to check it out on your own but there's nothing super crucial in there. So now that we're done with all of that, we can hit done and when we're ready to start streaming, we can simply hit the go live button in the bottom right corner. It'll say stream to Twitch, make sure that's on and then we can adjust our title here. I'm just gonna leave it as testing. Change your Twitch category, whatever game or category you wanna stream under. I'm gonna pick this random one so I don't bother anybody. Then when you're ready, we're gonna hit confirm and go live. It's gonna start working on our stream. Our stream is now live, so let's check it out over on Twitch. So as you can see now, our stream is live. I'm gonna type in a couple messages to the side. You can see that all my messages went through and we're streaming in style. When you're ready to end the stream, go back to Streamlabs and simply hit the end stream button in the bottom right corner and you're good to go. So watch this Twitch playlist to the side of me. It's gonna help level up your Twitch stream. My name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.